Today, I would like to explore Drop D. As I recall it, as a young adolescent boy discovering Drop D for the first time, I sent out a tweet asking what your favorite Drop D riff, and I found a lot of nostalgic responses. Well, the first one that I learned was this one, and for me, that's the best. So I'm gonna go through a couple of your submissions, what your favorite Drop D riff is, and break them down. Help us understand why these riffs are so special, because I always associate Drop D with simplicity, but that's only because of the time in my life when I was really into Drop D, if that makes sense. I'd like to explore the subtle nuances that makes Drop D so fun to play, in as a tuning. Hey guys, Tyler from the future here. I just uploaded this video and it got copyright claimed, so I'm taking this opportunity to say, hey, Black Friday sale, let's start it right now. Guitar Super System is on sale, just $5 for your first month. Subscribe, use the link down below, no coupon code required. If you're newer to my channel, I run this sale once a year around the holidays. Subscribe to Guitar Super System for just five bucks for your first month. You can unsubscribe at any time, but I don't know why you would wanna do that. There's tens of thousands of other students who are enjoying their time. Learning about major scale triads. Learning sweet picking. Exploring exotic scales. go through guided curriculums which lays out the path for you or you can bounce around and find your favorite subjects within Guitar Super System. Subscribe now, use the link in the description below. No coupon code required for five bucks for your first month. Now let's get to it. Drop. D. Commander Clyde says, outshine, because it's the first one I ever learned and it makes you feel like a badass. I'll be the judge of that, Commander Clyde. Let's see what we can learn from Outshined by Soundgarden. <laughs> That does make you feel like a badass. There are some wonderful things to take away from this riff. First of all, the palm muting that you employ with drop D is just magical. I think I learned to palm mute when I learned to tune to drop D, in fact. Of course, palm muting literally means resting your palm on the strings as you attack them to give them a sort of, well, muted sound. So no palm muting sounds like this. Palm muting sounds like this. And the ease in which you can play a power chord in the drop D tuning, palm muting can happen all over the place and it really just lends itself to a heavier sound. Getting a little carried away. Let's get back to the outshine riff here. Another thing we can learn is chromaticism in this D context, D minor I should say. We have this kind of blues note. So that is the flat fifth in the key of D minor. So with this flat fifth sound, it resolves obviously down to the fourth minor third. But that's something that I take from drop D and I really learned about modes and sounds other than like natural minor or major with drop D, that chromatic stuff is really accessible. Again, sounds really nice in this heavier context. Okay. Moving on, let's find another drop D riff that can inspire us. Santiago says, the sad but true groove. Ah, Santiago, I regret to inform you that is not in drop D. It's in fact in drop C standard. So I won't be playing that song in this video, but it's a great song. Gibson the Fox Rock says, the intro to Defector by Muse. Can't help but get into the groove and bang my head whenever I play it. Let's see if it makes us bang our heads. <laughs> Such a classic move to go with the octave. I just love the way this thick E string tuned to D functions in this tuning. It's really a crutch, and I mean that in the best way. It's like this safety net. If you have the octaves, or really the minor pentatonic scale picked out on this string, you really can't go wrong. So obviously we have the octave right here. 
Here's the flat seven, flat six. Here's the fifth. Here's the fourth. Here's the flat third. So if you have that pentatonic sound, it's like you're armed with that scale on this string. Octave is a great place to start. And then he takes advantage of these intervals. As you notice, this sounds a little off, right? Because it is acting as like a leading tone to this. Which again, we're seeing this flat five, this kind of eerie tritone sound. And then it goes into this major sound and we get a lot of modulation happening here. But the cool thing with drop D, Matthew Bellamy is kind of known for having some non-traditional voicings every now and then. This is actually an F sharp major triad in second inversion. In the bass, I have this C sharp. So it gives me that fifth in the bass so I can create these really cool little jazzy chords. And if you wanted to add to those, you could create something really cool with this distorted sound. So you can come up with little nice nifty things with these finger positions that afford you some nice dexterity as far as the melodies go that you can craft without actually moving very much. Having that bass accompaniment just a whole step down can really unlock some nice intervals for you to complement your melody playing. Killing in the Name of by Rage Against the Machine. Oh yes, this one came up quite a bit. I wonder which riff you guys are talking about because there's a couple that come to mind when I think of Killing in the Name. Mainly this one. Oh yeah, that's my favorite part of that song. Of course, you may prefer... That's great too. I like this verse riff though because of the places that it can take you. It really takes one step further that idea of chromaticism that we touched on with the outshined riff. We had this as our skeleton, the D minor sound. And then we have all the notes in between those notes. And if we put those together, we actually get a really cool sounding scale. That chromatic stuff really adds some spunk, some spice to an otherwise pretty natural sounding minor mode. But it's really about where you place those chromatic notes, you know, and really gives them effectiveness when you don't have them, right? So you can feel when they bridge that gap between the chord tones. <laughs> Now, another thing we can take from this riff is the anticipations. Now, as we know, drop D can be a really percussive sound. Just the elasticity, the tension of the string, you know, it's a little looser. It's kind of more floppy on the guitar neck. You can get some more percussive sounds out of it. And adding these little scratch percussive elements, they kind of act like a snare. You can almost hear this guitar riff as a drum beat. <laughs> So the wonders of drop D are numerous indeed. And I think it's easy to put drop D in that childhood box. Like, oh, well, that's not for me anymore. I've grown up and matured. Forget about that. Tune your guitar down to drop D, start riffing, and enjoy yourself. Because that's really what it's all about, isn't it? Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep shredding.